Welcome back to another We Be Talking podcast. Today is episode 11. I'm Justin. What is up? I'm Logan. And together, we're Cow Shock. So, this is a podcast about anime, games, everything in between. We're basically, I guess at this point, like an entertainment podcast almost. Cause to anime, yeah, sure. Games, and movies, TVs, there you go. We're all the news you need. Okay. And let's go ahead and start. What? <laughs> no, I mean, all the news you need, sure. Yeah, man. I wouldn't. <laughs> For none of these, all actually. The news you need. Uh, Find it here. Yes. Um, let's go ahead and start jumping into the good old anime news. Let's start with the uh, the big one, which is My Hero Academia Season 4 Release Date Revealed. Uh, Woo! I don't know if it's actually release date or just release window, but uh, so the anime is going to be springing, springing, airing in spring of 2019. So that is okay. It's not like a surprise, obviously. We yeah, assumed it'd be in spring 2019. Yeah, we said spring or summer. Well, I mean, it's always nice to get confirmation and it's not like pushed back to after that. But yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, okay. There's nothing else on that. So that's something we're all going to be excited for. <laughs> I mean, I'm we, love, excited. we love My Hero Academia. So <clears throat> the more seasons, the more we get. Let's go. I'm right. ready for spring. Um, also, the the film... For My Hero Academia ended its run with 5.7 million at the box office, which is, I would say, what, 17, I think it was... 17 days of screening and 556 theaters across the U.S. and Canada. Um, I think uh, it, what, it finished top 10 in earnings. So here it is. For, uh... The movie debuted at number 23 when it ended, when it opened, but ended up hitting the top 10 spot on the top 10 list of the highest grossing domestic anime films of all time. Even managing to pass Miyazaki's The Wind Rises. So that's Does it have a list? No. Like, does it so. list others? No. I was just curious to see if like... I feel like that's pretty good for a... For an anime, I would say yes. Right. Like, not a dedicated... Like, not a Your Name or a Studio Ghibli movie. It's like a... Yeah, movie from uh, which series. you see, uh, Elon Musk tweeted out saying, "Your name is incredible." He did. He is a, he is a we one of us. He's one of us. <laughs> one of us. One of us. <laughs> but it is nice seeing uh, that they can actually do something successful. I don't know what their budget was on the movie. Probably nowhere near five point seven million, because it is All right. I don't know. Um. But yeah, good run. My Hero Academia is, I think it's more accessible. I think as well to the, uh, like, common people, normies, right. <laughs> the normies, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the normal people. Yes, yeah, the non-anime viewers is what I'm going for. Um, let's see. Other than that, there's another movie I guess that did. Pretty well as uh, the second Monster Strike film tops the weekend with a modest of 151 million ten. Uh, so I guess that did all right. But Gintama 2 finally dropped out of its top uh, of top ten in its eighth weekend. So anime eighth films weekend. are starting to they're, they're doing good. They're doing good. Apparently they're doing super good. Yeah, between anime, I guess live actions, all that. So don't say that forbidden word. Hey, the Gintama just... film was live action. And finally, every time you front. say it, another one comes out. <laughs> you want all of them, okay? I I don't know why you do, but I know you love live action. Stop it! Don't spread such <laughs> lies. <laughs> and we also got when the uh, second half. Of Attack on Titan season three <laughs> is coming, so they're doing a break, and we're gonna get the the rest of it in spring. Spring twenty nineteen. April. Right, so... April. 
So yeah, April, the, the so month, spring, the game. So spring 2019 is going to be so loaded in packed of good anime. You have my hero season four attack on Titan season three, part two. You have one punch man. It's two. I think Jojo part five will still be airing during that time. <laughs> Jojo's I'm, always gonna be going, man. Right. There is so much. I feel like the anime community is gonna collectively melt down during the spring of 2019. We're gonna have to have a very packed reviewing schedule. I also it. saw that next week, the popular volleyball anime Haikyuu has an announcement, and if it announces season four, spring 2019, I feel like. The community will explode, but that's just speculation. <laughs> so. I'm I'd be down with true. all that, man. I would too. I, I love would high like... It's not like my favorite sports anime. It's not even like my top three or whatever, but it is four or five, and it's just fantastic. I love it. <laughs> and it's super enjoyable. If all those come out in spring, uh, the greatest spring se- or the greatest anime season ever. <laughs> Uh, definitely down for that. So, okay, moving on though. There's, hold on, let me look at this. Um, sorry, the, the title. Dropkick on my devil. <laughs> That's the title. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dropkick on my devil. Okay, sure. We'll I'll get a it. second season if the first season sells 2,000 DVD Blu-ray sets. So... They have pre-orders of 813. I feel like if the first season was good enough, it shouldn't be too hard to sell 2,000. Well, this was an announcement they make. So they're basically saying, hey, guys, fucking buy our shit so we can make <laughs> the rest of it. it. Yeah. It's probably, maybe they are struggling a lot more and they actually, maybe they have dedicated fans. But I mean, 2,000 shouldn't be too hard? I don't know actually how sales translate with DVD Blu-ray sets. I have no idea either. I don't really buy them. I buy them for my top 10. That's it. Like, I want to own all my time. But anime are actually extremely expensive. They are very expensive. There's like, what, well, um, because I want to own Daily Lives of High School Boys. It's like 12 episodes or whatever. It's like 80 bucks for the set. It's anime. Is <laughs> or like 140 and... or something. Some are like 80, some are like 130. And it's like, who came up with these prices? Get out of here. Right. I would like to have a nice anime collection of you know some manga some anime but i also don't want to be broke so <laughs> i gotta pick my poison yeah exactly and it's like you know i own a few but they're all old ones so they weren't in the price range of a bajillion dollars <laughs> so right. i guess good luck to those people i just like the title drop kick on my devil um Whatever the hell that means, but we're dropkick. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Now this one, we got these. That one anime, or we talked about it before. It was getting an adaptation. Uh, my housemate is on my knee, sometimes on my head. The one where his housemate's a cat. <laughs> um. <laughs> So what they're doing is they're having fans send them pictures of their cats for a promotion. And they're going to um, have those in the end title cards for the series. So in the episodes for the, That's pretty at cool. the end. So they're going to have people's cats featured and stuff in the show. That's kind of a cool <laughs> promotion. I think that's it. Yeah, that's super cool. I don't have a cat, so I guess I can't <laughs> participate. <laughs> you don't have a... Housemate that is on your knee and sometimes your head. <laughs> right. <laughs> is that not what you want? You get a dog that's sometimes on your knee. Not. I don't think a dog's usually on your head. But It would have to be a small dog. Oh, okay. I guess maybe a big dog. You're laying down and just pounces your head. I guess that's true. That is a valid statement. But I think it's cool to incorporate your fans like that. To give them a chance to be like, hey, that's a photo of... Me and my pet, or my cat. Hey, or that's my cat! Hey! <laughs> it looks just like your cat! <laughs> <laughs> right. I think more should actually do stuff like that to incorporate some stuff. Um, we got. Oh. Uh, Promare is going to be in 
It's an anime film, an original anime film that's going to be in theaters in January. It's being under so upcoming with the direction of Hiroyuki Imiyashi, who's from Kill la Kill. And right, I believe Studio Trigger has yeah, like Trigger is on it. So right, um, so they did. I'm pretty sure they did Gurren and Log on Kill la Kill and Darlin and the Franks. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So. They gave so a it's... teaser trailer for it and everything. So expect a. I haven't seen it yet. So actually, or I haven't seen the trailer. Yeah, I was like, no one's seen it yet. I've seen. Oh, I've been <laughs> connections. I've seen the whole movie. <laughs> It'll be. There. I'm expect something wild and fantastic. I would say the wild part for sure. Right. I expect something wild and crazy. I'll say that. <laughs> that... Anyway. That would be. Don't want someone to be like, you much... said fantastic. It was awful. <laughs> so I take it back. I take fantastic back. It'll be wild. <laughs> the uh, other movie uh, is getting Doraemon. Doraemon. That thing's been going on forever, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they're going to have another film, and they have a, a countdown on their website right now. The count, actually, when this is up, <clears throat> this this podcast is up. I think the countdown will actually be finished because it's tomorrow. So uh, everyone's going to assume it's going to show the release date for 2019. So um, I know Doraemon's been around for a long time, I believe. I've um, heard about it a lot. I've, I think I've heard the name before. What's always up with these, you know, cryptic on their site, they have a countdown. <laughs> like, that's it's like a new thing. Hype, man. It's like, Oh, what's gonna happen when it gets down? It gets down, or oh, it gets done? Get out of here! My bad. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put it on uh, silent or vibrate. Everyone's just random group chats that come out of nowhere <laughs> at nine at night. Okay. Um. So I guess get ready for when I next week we'll have the rest of the story as the countdown will be finished, and I can give you the date. Uh, wow, let's see. nice. Way to bring people back. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> come back. Uh, we got Domestic Girlfriend gets an anime um, adaptation. It's going to be in January of 2019. Um, you want to know what Domestic Girlfriend's all about? Let's hear it. I am pretty sure I have read some of this. Um uh, so it's about a young man whose life becomes way more complicated when his father gets remarried and he meets his new stepsisters. So here's the rest of it. High schooler Naso is hopelessly in love with his cheerful and popular teacher, Hina. However, one day out of Mixer, he meets a moody girl by the name of Rui and ends up sleeping with her. Soon after, his father announces that he's getting remarried to a woman with two daughters. And who shows okay. up other than both Hina and Rui? <laughs> Jesus. So the girl he sleeps with the next day becomes his stepsister. And the teacher he's had a crush on is now also his stepsister. <laughs> Who comes up with this? Someone's just like, I want some spicy drama. Uh, oh, it gets spicy. It I, sounds, it sounds funny, though. It sounds like it could be funny. It, it's Border Age. Uh, Border Age. Oh, boy. I believe, oh, I'm pretty boy. sure it was. It's been a while since I've read it. Okay. okay. Quit, quit asking me about the stuff I read. <laughs> all right, all right. Quit asking me. I just read stuff. I see something. I'm like, oh, Border oh. Age. Should I read it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simple man. Uh, let's <clears throat> see here. We got the comedy manga Three Leaves, Three Colors has two chapters left. So it's been going Ooh. on since 2003. Damn. I wonder if people ever get bored of writing their own story, if it's that long. I'd assume there have been some cases, <laughs> At least right? they give them some... I don't know. Like, I feel like it'd be... I'd rather write a novel or something where you don't have like this deadline of every week or month or right. whatever it is. Because it's like I mean, I know, 15 sure years of stress and then you have to keep coming up with what's next. I'm sure they like plan ahead and stuff, but still, like, 
I don't know. I wonder if I haven't. I'm sure there have been some issues or cases like that where they're like, "Damn, I hate this now." <laughs> I think there have. Um, I know a lot of them will do like one shots first, and then it's like if it does well or however they think about it after writing the one shot, it's like, will they continue with it or not? But yeah, it's like it's 15 years, so I'm sure at like the fifth year mark, you're like, oh god. Do, do I like this? Do, do I like where this is going? And then you're like 14 years later, it's like, damn, I got to end this. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, man, how am I going to wrap this up? And then you're like writing it, trying to figure out how to wrap it up. And the next thing you know, it's another two years later. You're like, I think I finally can wrap it up. Been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> uh, and it's not like, I don't know. If you look at some of them, like 15 years really isn't, a lot of content because it's either just one a week and it's like some of them True. are like 10 pages nine pages or some are 20 pages it's a lot of drawing though so i guess at least That's for some well, eh, yeah i guess if you're the illustrator <laughs> <laughs> some people aren't the illustrators um and then this one's a little more unique an upcoming anime revisions Announced a manga adaptation. All right. Yeah, so it's backwards. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think this has been done before, and it's usually not as good. But uh, so the latest anime from the Code Geass director, Goro, will be traveling beyond the small screen and onto the printed page. Uh, so, yeah, before the premiere of the anime, they're going to have release a couple mangas and it was going to be written by Gyo who's behind Psychopaths uh, Mandatory Happiness and uh, illustrated by some dude who's done Clockwork Planet I think I've heard of Clockwork Planet I'm not actually sure there's a lot of anime out there so that is kind of weird that they're going backwards with this it's that like, is interesting and they're releasing it like prior to the anime it's like why just re- not just release the anime or right. it's like I don't know or is it the manga going to be like a little... Because it's going to be three volumes. And they're going to come out this December. Um, so I guess it's a January anime, I guess, at that point. Would you just... Uh, I don't know. It's like... Would, is it going to be like a prequel thing? Or is it going to be like, oh, this is the whole story. You get spoiled right before our <laughs> original anime. Is it like background on some of the characters that you just didn't want to flush out in the anime itself it's like um i don't know it'll be interesting or that's just it's different i guess it is different it's just it's weird there are some though, video like, games that do that where like they release right. like a, it's nothing like crazy it's like oh my god i can't believe but you know it's different it's like hmm why go that way but you know whatever <laughs> whatever boost our sales Get stuff to get people to spend money on stuff that you don't actually need to spend money on. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Love comedy light not okay. Love okay. The light novel Orewo Sukanoa Omokadako Kayo gets a TV anime. Let's see. Where's the English title of this? Are you the? Are you really the only one who likes me? <laughs> can i say your japanese is spot on <laughs> thanks i'm man. sure there was no mispronunciations at all in that no man suki no nawa <laughs> dude, dude, I, 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 that's why i go to the english now it's like really long I'm just are you really the only one who likes me um i guess that's a harem i guess we'll go with sure sounds like a love story in some I mean, type they of do title a love comedy and it's a light novel so uh let's see um the novel is based on the authors you can't bait you (laughs) this it's based on one of his novels i guess so it's a side story of his and he won a gold award for it and it's called you can't use a broken watering can (laughs) (laughs) thank you thank you for the sound advice wow we can't hold water i wonder why you can't use it <laughs> what? these titles for these light novels are they're just so hilarious funny. they're perfect 
So yeah, it's getting a TV adaptation. Uh, they don't say when. It's just, hey, it's getting an adaptation. So be happy if you've read that, I guess. Uh, let's see. We got Strike the Blood 3 OVA is coming. I guess we needed more of that anime. We did it. <laughs> I, I'm I'm caught up with the anime and the OVAs and stuff. It's not very good. But hey, we're getting more. And we're getting more very slowly. So it's going to be releasing in five volumes of two episodes each. So you'll get the first two episodes, December 19th, 2018. Third and fourth episode, March 27th, 2019. Fifth and awesome. sixth episode, May 29th, 2019. 7th and 8th, July 24th of 2019, 9th and 10th, September 25th of 2019. You have a whole year to get through 10 episodes. What? Jesus. Who, Why would they do that? I don't know. Why do we need more of this very mediocre anime? I guess people are watching and like it. I'm in the wrong. I liked the like the first season, and then it was like, let's go to OVA release, and it was like, okay. Granted, I watched the first season when it was Whenever the hell that came out forever ago. Maybe I'm mistaken how good it was. Because the OVA was like, okay, this is... Eh. It's such a strange way to release things. It's like, we're going to take a whole year to, you know, release not that many episodes. It's 10 episodes and they're releasing two at the same time. I'm like, it's like, okay, cool. Um... I feel like they'd just be annoying to what like have i feel like oh i gotta mark my calendar for each release <laughs> that is true like okay you gotta make sure i don't miss any which i don't know i at that point you might as well wait till the end because you have to rewatch the first two episodes by the time you get to three and four remember what the first two episodes were about and then you have to rewatch the first four to remember <laughs> right. what the for the I next two might as well just wait the whole year and watch them all at once. Yeah, that's what I would do. The other thing, okay. Production, IMS announced bankruptcy. They were behind Data Live um, and High School Fleet. I don't know High School Fleet. I have heard Data Live. Um, I think those were some of the big ones in RAMO, I think was another one I've heard of. But sometimes it happens. So another production company. <laughs> oh, here. Their most anime works. Um, let's see if there's any of these. I really have no. The Castle Town Dandelion, I think I've heard of. What are these titles, man? They got Data Live, which I know. They did the, I guess, two. Gonna Be the Twin Tale. The Testament of Sister New Devil. The Testament of Sister New Devil Burst. Maybe. <laughs> and then you got like Hybrid Heart Magius Academy a Taraxia. Uh I guess I had one this year called Tokonami. Okay, I can see it. They got I don't know what they were doing here. I'm pretty sure Castle Town Inline was supposed to be good. I don't remember. But rest in peace, those guys. Half and declare bankruptcy. No more silence. <laughs> all right, that's it. Yeah, that's all. The, that's all the silence they need. And I think that does it for all the anime news. Not too well. There's just some big announcements. Spring 2019. Don't forget that. Yeah, spring 2019. Mark mark that down in your calendars if you love anime. <laughs> yes, and everyone loves I'm sure anime. You've done it. I'm sure you've already done it. So whatever. <laughs> True. So let's go ahead and jump into our topic, which is actually a topic provided to you by Logan this week. Woo! Basically comes down to, would you rather have a bad start to an anime or a bad end to an anime? Uh, right. Well, a bad start with a good ending yeah. or a good ending with a bad start. Or, yeah, I said that right. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you said that right. Good okay, start, whatever. bad ending. Bad start, good ending. Okay. Uh, this... There will be some discussion here. That's the point of having a topic. So <laughs> this is this is okay. I was just thinking because I feel like people commonly weight endings more importantly than beginnings. 
Because to me, I kind—I guess I could feel the same way. But it's weird. It's because it's like, well, if it has a bad start, I probably won't watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's where I am. That's where I lay. Like, I'd rather have, I think, a bad ending. Because I guess, because if it has a bad start, I'm probably not going to invest in it and get to a good ending, right? Yeah. But the bad endings are always heavily weighted because I think for me, like, oh, you've had a great time the whole time. And then all of a sudden, you're completely right. disappointed and ruined. It kind of just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, too. You're just like, oh, I love this anime. And then the ending trash. And you're like, wow, you ruined something I loved. <laughs> and there's like no, there's no more fix of it after it's ended. So, I mean. But I... there are, have been shows that I've watched where like the first season or two are like not good. And then the rest of it's fantastic. And it's like. But I don't know, which one would I rather prefer? I There's shows where, like, yeah, I could just not watch the final season. But I right. can't. I, I feel weird skipping the first, like, two seasons, right? Like, some shows, let's say, like, I can't think of an anime off the top of my head right now. Uh, I'll just use an actual television show. Uh, uh, How I Met Your Mother. Terrible, terrible final season. Terrible. We don't talk about it. That's how bad it was. But the, all the seasons up to it are fine. You just watch them; it's great. And just not watch the last season; you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. But like The Office, the first season is awful, and then the rest of it is pretty good until it gets bad again. That's not a great example because middle's good, bad's the the later right. half is terrible, early's bad. But like you can't really choose to skip the first season. <laughs> Because then right. you're leaving yourself out of the loop. Um, I feel like, I guess it kind of depends too on like the type of, because if it's an anime very story driven, I p- would probably prefer a, well, I think in general, I'd probably prefer like a, a good ending. You know, I, I guess I could, you know, truck through the not so good start sometimes. That's not always guaranteed, but like, I'd want my show to wrap up on a good note, I guess I would say. Just so it's like, all right, I was satisfied. And I think it also matters how many episodes the bad start is, right? Because if somebody else has already watched it, right, they can be like, oh, it gets better. And then it's like, then you're like, oh, it better get better. Like, it, right. if it doesn't get better, I'm going to have to choke it's, you. Right. <laughs> and say for the vice versa, if it's like a law gas anime and it has some trash in, you're like, I just wasted my life. <laughs> like,. <laughs> I don't know. No, I was right, just no. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Naruto did fall victim to going on too long, so it had like a bad ending. The beginning was great. Even first Naruto was great. I'd say the beginning of Shippuden up till Pain was great. And then it kind of, you could feel that it's getting dragged on. And the then the ending kind of was just kind of baffling at points like what the hell but i heard bleach was also a victim of that it's pretty much ones that are dragged on i feel forcefully by to make more money pretty much but yeah yeah it definitely depends i think on the amount of episodes i can get through at the end of the day though which one would i have to take i think i would have to go with the bad end because at least I'd enjoyed the ride. I wouldn't enjoy the ride with a bad start because I'd jump off the ride. <laughs> True. I just, in my opinion, I feel like people weigh endings a lot higher than um, starts, if that makes sense. No, yeah. I, like if, if, I think it's just because, like you said, it leaves a bad taste. Right. Because like, if you tell someone to watch some show, I will always hear... Because, like, for example, if a show has a bad start and a strong finish, this is what you hear. Oh, it just starts a bit slow. But if a show has a good start and a bad finish, people will be like, that ending was horrible. Don't watch it. I feel like it's that much of a difference to people. Which, in some cases, I can understand. Yeah, but, like, I don't think that stops me from recommending something, right? Like, let's look at Death Note. I'm not a fan of that ending. But I'm definitely going to recommend that anime to people because i still think overall it's fantastic it just yeah. had not a very i wish good i could think of me. an anime um, that was like an awful god awful ending like what the hell just happened 
I I can't. There's nothing I've seen. I feel like I felt that way. But you know. Yeah, but but now I'm trying to think of right because we've dropped we've do reviews we've dropped multiple shows because of how they started right, right? and yeah that's true uh, maybe they finished strong we would never know well one of those I did continue to watch it didn't finish strong it started a week <laughs> finished week uh, but like some of the others I didn't finish and we'll never know because the right start I've heard bad. actually Black Clover is I wouldn't say good just not as bad still not enticing enough for me to watch it but <laughs> i will say some anime can change and get better but if it takes too long you're cut i ain't watching you sorry you know, we got a limited amount of time to get my attention yeah you, you can't tell me to get through like 50 episodes before it starts getting good right it's oh so one piece <laughs> Uh-oh. Whoa, whoa! That's taboo, <laughs> man. That's taboo in the anime world. I mean, that's the that's the forbidden anime you could never mention in bad light. It's a joke, all right. I asked my friend. I was there's like, like, I think there's like two things that you can't ever insult. One is One Piece. The other is BTS. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I love BTS, so I'm staying careful there. If you say anything bad about them, their fans are gonna murder you in your sleep. So. Right. Those are like the two things. Everything else, fair game to make fun of. Or I guess not Black Clover because apparently we didn't deserve it. But uh, that's another thing. Damn. <laughs> Throwback to when we were reviewing it before dropping it. <laughs> so but yeah. the moral of the story is we don't like either option. <laughs> I, like good, I like good starts and good endings. No, I think I'll take the bad ending over the bad start. I'm opposite. Just, just add some spicy drama to the mix. <laughs> All right, that's the but topic. everyone Come can on. let us know what they think. So, that goes to our another segment: video games. Woo! Woo! Transition. Um. <laughs> so. We got a tease that Command and Conquer could be getting remasters, which this is big for me. I'm all down for that. When we got trolled at the whole E3 where they brought out, and I saw Command and Conquer, but it was on a mobile freaking platform because they were like, oh, hey, we got this eSports Command and Conquer for mobile. Oh, um, boy, mobile gaming. Well, Five let's just years say ago. nobody was happy about that. So EA producer uh, Jim Vasella, who's he dropped into the Command and Conquer subreddit to talk about the upcoming game and to talk with people about Command and Conquer in general, which is really cool that he came in and started talking with people because he goes, uh, what was his thing? Oh, uh, where is it? I'm pretty sure. I'm, well, let's see. Um, does this not have the quote in it? Oh yeah, following the reel of, of Rivals, which was their mobile game, we heard you loud and clear. The community also <laughs> wants to see the franchise return to PC. Uh, and I I just want to say, more. every time a company has a saying or has a statement that says, "We heard you loud and clear," means you're right. We fucked up. It's like that's pretty much what it means. It's like, how did you not see this coming? Like, I, I tweeted it and I was like, well, way to kill your already dead franchise even further. It's like, <laughs> I, like we haven't seen a Command & Conquer release in quite a while. And then we see it come back as mobile, the worst. But he came in to talk with people and he's like, so we're thinking about bringing back remasters. Uh, we're not really sure yet. Nothing true. We're just going to, he's going to talk with everyone and just see where they're feeling. Uh, and he's been talking back and forth with people on the server. Like, if we were to bring them back, how would, would you like this to balance the game? to be a little more balanced or keep it as is how it was with balancing stuff like right. that. So he's talking to see where people want what they want. I would be fine with a new one in general, if it was a full PC release, but also I'd be fine with a remaster so I could play command and conquer again. But it's like, <laughs> which one would I want remastered? Probably be red alert too. That was the one I remember. I played red alert, red alert Two a lot. And then there was a couple others that I played. That I would gladly takes back 
I guess. Uh, just <laughs> please, you know, just don't give me this mobile rivals ever, 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 ever. You don't like mobile gaming? No, I don't God. mobile game at all. I have consoles and like I'm never in a situation where all I have is my phone to play games. Yeah, I I mean I don't even want to play games really on my phone. I don't know. Feels like they're not just just I don't Especially, know. Especially Command and Conquer, you're going towards a very like hardcore group of people when it comes to like real time strategy. Those aren't going to be your casual gamers that you draw in to play right. on mobile. You're asking somebody who has a PC or a console to play it on their phone. That's, right. that's not happening. Get out of here. Where, where is your logic, EA? Oh, your EA. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Um, Left Alive got a release date. So Left Alive is in the front mission world. It's kind of like their spinoff. Uh, March 5th is a release date. So I'm not sure where I stand on this because I love the Front Mission series. Incredible turn-based strategy uh, mech game with your good old Wanzers. This one, you're in it, but you're actually a human. Well, you're a human in the others, but you're on foot. You're not in a, a mech, which is kind of <laughs> interesting. So that's big for me. I would rather have a front mission game, but Left Alive does look interesting, and it gives a different perspective of the world of front mission. Ooh. So yeah, March fifth for that. We got okay. So <laughs> up and down news for this story. Diablo three was said earlier in the week. One of the business insider had reported that at a demonstration, a Blizzard representative confirmed that console crossplay would be enabled for Diablo 3 across Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One for everyone to play together. Well, um, apparently that's not true. Blizzard oh came out and had to make a statement. While we love the idea of bringing our players acro together across platforms, we do not have any plans to implement cross-platform gameplay for Diablo. Um... Which is kind of interesting because people are saying, so everyone's like, oh, yeah, I could cross play with my people. And then a day later, oh, no, I can't cross play with my right. friends. <laughs> Which Diablo 3 could be one where you could easily cross play. It's not like there's any differences yeah. between any version. but um, <clears throat> And it's also weird how a member of the Diablo 3 team did say that there was going to be cross play, and all of a sudden they're not. It's like, how did he make that mistake during an interview? Or did he just get? Did he hear something on the floor that there was potential for it, and just assumed that meant yes, there was going to be crossplay? <laughs> right. Like that'd be so awkward. He has to go back to work, be like, "Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> so everyone mad at us now." It's everyone's getting excited. They're like, "Oh, I'm definitely getting on my Switch now. If I can play with everyone, it's like, oh no, no, it's, we can't play with right. our friends. Just allow crossplay on everything. Thanks. Simple." Yeah. Pretty much. Um, let's see. Sega updated a lot of their sales list uh, across the years of all their kind of properties. So, like the acquired properties when they bought out people like Megami Tensei, Shimagami Tensei. They shouldn't have said Megami Tensei series. They should have said Shimagami Tensei in this article. Uh, has sold 12.4 million units across all its software. Persona has done 9.3 across all the iterations. Uh, Total War has done 22 million across all its iterations. Some of these are lower than I imagine they would be. Uh, Yakuza has done 11 million across its series. Here's Aladdin since 1989. 570,000 units across its 14. They have 14 editions of the Aladdin game? Wow. Do they have sequels for the Aladdin? It says Aladdin series. How many Aladdin games were there? Wow. 14, you said? Yeah. That's a lot. I That's remember a... the one on my... Oh, was that Game Gear I played it on? As I in think Aladdin, there was the Disney yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah. I remember playing an Aladdin I think there on was my one... Super Nintendo, yeah, I think. I had one on Game Gear. I know there was one on uh, Game Boy. 
killer. All right, so that's three. Yeah, you know, I what, guess 11 they more? <laughs> <laughs> they did 570,000 just... units. Well, I guess that's impressive for an Aladdin game. <laughs> Jesus. Let's see. The Hatsune Miku project, since 2009, has done 6 million units. I actually like the Hatsune Miku games. Uh, beat, like, music beat games are kind of a niche, but I do enjoy them. I like some music beat games. Like, keep to the rhythm, is that what you mean? Or Yeah, yeah. Kind of like your I've played some. OSU. Um, yeah, that's the main one I've played. I've played Hatsune Miku. Persona has I mean, couple. I have played, like, DDR. DDR is awesome. I fucking love at. DDR. I was actually pretty <laughs> good at it, but we owned the pads. So I was able to play at my house. Not just at the arcade, like most people. Right. Uh, fun series, but... Uh, they did also, in the report, say... They're working, going to be working more with their overseas localization teams with the goal of simultaneously releasing games worldwide as part of its Road to 2020 initiative. So usually, you know, Persona comes out in Japan, and then we wait six months, and then we get it. But now they're going to try working where it can be in sync and be released everywhere at the same time, which Bless. is a lot more work to do than to do it later. But uh, at least now I don't have to be... You know, wishing I could read Japanese. <laughs> Please, I just want my. Please translate. It's like, just give it to me sooner. And that's what they're going to do. Thank you, Sega, for giving us games quicker. So, Stranded Deep. It was a game that was supposed to come out on October 9th, so five days ago, uh, on PS4 and Xbox stores. Unfortunately, it was being published by Telltale Games. So this was a completely dev, different, Hi. like an individual dev team. They were looking for publishers and funding, and Telltale's took on their project. They're like, hey, we'd publish for you. Um, and they did tweet These out. These past weeks have been, what has Telltale ruined? So, yeah. So Strand Deep was being, public, uh, was being developed by an independent game studio. Uh, called Beam Team Games, and they had tweeted out on October 7th, Stranded Deep has been pulled from both PlayStation and Xbox stores as far as we can tell. Release was on schedule, but tight before the bad news hit. So it seems unlikely it will be released on schedule. We'll keep everyone updated when we know more. So they basically had it all done. The game was supposed to come out, and then Telltale... I like... Doesn't even tell them. It's like, as far as we can tell, it's been removed from the stores. <laughs> so it's like, oh, cool, thanks, Telltale. You're just assholes. You don't tell as anyone as anybody as thing. And it's like, Man, how to just not do anything right, featuring Telltale. Yeah, they put all this work for it to you know get published so they can sell it. So now I guess they're gonna have to look for someone else to publish it. Like, it shouldn't cost much to publish. Like get it on the PlayStation and Xbox stores because uh, they have everything done. So it's not like you need to help fund them, like develop the game or anything. You right. just need to get it published, which isn't really easy to do on your own as an independent game studio at times. So maybe they can get that uh, taken care of. So thanks, Telltale. Rooting, <laughs> rooting independent teams that are trying to get their stuff done. Now let's talk about Microsoft's cloud system. So last the week, cloud. we talked about Chrome and their cloud or their streaming service. So Microsoft has theirs. It's called X Cloud Project X Cloud. Yeah. Ah, paying homage to all those Xbox names that start with X. <laughs> <laughs> so what they're going to be doing is allowing you to stream your games. To any device, so obviously your Xbox One, your uh, your smartphones, your tablets, and you're going to be able to use a Bluetooth device to be able to use your Xbox controller on your phones and tablets, or on some cases you'll be able to use touch controls for all the games. Why you would ever want to play a big game like, I don't know, Assassin's Creed Odyssey on your phone with touch controls I good no good luck. You ain't climbing any of those buildings. So is it any Xbox game? Yeah. That's oh, their goal. Dang. That's crazy. 
That'd be pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, here's my thing. That, like, the ultimate goal is to make streaming available on 4G networks. Well, when the minimum for a Google Chrome one was 25 megabits, you're lucky. You probably are lucky to hit that on a 4G network. Like, right. Um, 5G is the new stuff coming out, which no one really has yet. It's still in development. I mean, Verizon put it out in a couple cities, but theirs isn't real 5G. They actually... <laughs> So there's Fake 5G. No, it literally is like there's st- there's a industry standard. They didn't follow the industry yes. standard. They just had their own thing and they call it 5G, just because they they could. Uh, just to scam people, pretty much. Just pretty much, much, yes. And it's only like three cities or something right now. It's like, um, so yeah, I don't imagine I, people playing like yeah, you could stream the game onto your phone or whatever and attach your xbox controller to it uh i i don't see it would you ever use it if you could have an xbox controller on your phone and play a I game mean, on your phone? Uh, as we just talked about how we don't play games on our mold or right like, i mean i'm and you have bored. to have a strong I'm that bored at work <laughs> you, just, you have to have a strong internet connection too i like, mean i don't even have unlimited data so no i would not do that <laughs> Well, a lot of those planets, like if you have unlimited data, they like control yeah, they how much speed. Anyway. Yeah, that's like the like some of them. It's like, oh, you can get unlimited data, but the highest downloads rate you can get is three megabits, and it's like, well, good luck streaming a game right. at that speed when you need at least twenty five for it to be decent. Are, are we about to get like some announcement of some super phones now? Microsoft's like, oh, presenting our new phone that has seven G. Perfect for the X Cloud. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> but it's like if you're gonna travel with something. You travel with your Switch, <laughs> right? Or Which, a la- laptop, like, I guess. Yeah, like at least with the it's Switch, you got a full screen there. The console, you got all sorts of games. You want to have the Xbox games, but I, I just don't see a situation. It's like. Especially since you need that strong internet connection at all times, because otherwise you're gonna have massive latency and like right. issues It'd that just be awful to play. And where you to have those speeds, you would have to be at home. If you're at home, you're not gonna use it. Yeah, because you're gonna be playing on your actual PC uh, right. or console. You're actually be Unless you only using. have one console, right? And your brother's on it or something. It's like get another TV. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's like. So, you know, yes, we're getting there. But also in Microsoft news, uh, it's reported that they're close to buying out Obsidian Entertainment, which would be a big thing for Xbox uh, or Microsoft Xbox. They've been buying out a whole bunch of studios this year, so I could see it happening. And, you know, Obsidian's strong with their PC releases, so it would give them... It's good for Obsidian because they already releasing on PC anyway, so this will give them more funding. Uh, they're behind like Pillars of Eternity, Pillars of Eternity 2, uh, Tyranny, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, all those big games. Yeah. Uh, and they worked on, uh, I think Fallout New Vegas was them, and South Park The Stick of Truth. Uh, so, yeah, there's some big things there for Microsoft. Good stuff, Obsidian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, like, it's not like uh, Microsoft. When Microsoft was asked about it, said we do not comment on rumors or speculations. But with, but when Obsidian spokesperson was asked, he says, unfortunately, we do not comment on rumors or speculations, other than to say the rumors album by Fleetwood Mac still holds up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, ooh, does it? I don't know. I don't. Ooh. I've never cared for Fleetwood Mac myself. But it also could be like, oh, you're talking about rumors and saying it still holds up. <laughs> you could have said it doesn't hold up, which would mean, no, you're not getting bought out. But holds up means, yes, you are getting bought out. <laughs> I'm going into this. Big news. PSN Woo. name changes are coming. Last week we talked about it. Uh, potentially coming, as it being speculated on now that it's officially announced it's gonna be coming out in early 2019 beta testing is gonna be soon 
So the first name change will be free. Uh, changes after that are going to be $10 or $5 if you're a PlayStation Plus member. Which, if you're not a PlayStation Plus member, you're probably not going to care to change your name because you can't play online. All right. Uh, so that's $5. It's going to be the <laughs> name changes. There are catches, though. Um, let's see where it is. Uh, so... Okay, the feature is compatible with PS4 games originally published after April 1st, 2018, and a large majority of the most most played games on PS4 that were released before the state. However, please note, not all games and applications for PS4, PS3, and PS Vita systems are guaranteed to support the online ID change, and users may occasionally encounter issues or errors in certain games, or if you're having experiences after changing your ID, you can revert back to your original ID for free at any time but you'll only be able to revert back once. So I think that is because of the whole system error when they first initially set up PSN. So it's like those old games could only recall to that ID. So if your ID is different, then all of a sudden they can't recall to your profile ID. So you probably aren't going to be able to play the game or have any of your saves or right, anything yeah. like that. Um, but I can't think of, they are going to have a list of all compatible games that work when the changes do go through. So I, mean, I can't think of any online game back in the old days that you could even think about playing that would <clears> matter <throat> anyway. So I think everyone should be safe. Thankfully, I have a name I'm fine with. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make a mistake. Good job. I, was, I wasn't as dumb as all the other teenagers, right? <laughs> Who wanted to be like Weed Banger sixty nine or something? <laughs> weed Banger. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take that one. I'm gonna change it to Weed Banger sixty nine. <laughs> to Weed Banger sixty nine. <laughs> it was just some fun news. I don't know if you saw, but uh, Ninja was on Ellen. I did not see that actually. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious, actually, because. Uh, Ellen, obviously. Ellen DeGeneres, if you guys somehow don't know who Ellen is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but he was like trying to show her how to play. Of course, her not being a gamer at all, but being a comedian. So it was a pretty funny segment. And he was like right. playing a duo with her. And she, <laughs> she had him stop playing. I was like, why are you shooting at them? He's like, well, they were trying to kill me. He's like, how do you know that? He's like, well, they shot at me. They never shot at him. He was. Clearly, you're shooting at them first. She's like, well, have you tried talking with them? He's like, all right, let me try. He goes down and he puts up a wall, and he starts doing the infinite dab in front of them, and then they gunned him down. He's like, see, I told you they were bad. <laughs> it's a really funny. It's like four minutes. Definitely worth I'll the watch. check it out. Uh, He's definitely becoming like the face of gaming, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think he just flat out is the face of gaming. Right. Well, point. I mean, I don't want to. Some Maybe back in the day, it could have been like PewDiePie. He was pretty big and on a lot of things. But yeah, some people, you know, don't like Ninja, I guess. But it's whatever. I think it's good that gaming is like mainstream. Accepted. Yeah, I feel like he's actually like the perfect person to do it too. Like he's actually just a really good guy. You know, it could be worse. <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> True. It could be. Uh, like a Tyler one or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, not God. what you want for the be... face of gaming. I can just imagine him on Ellen. <laughs> Ellen! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> probably, I mean, probably not. He's, he's pretty actually, because you saw him on uh, like the League of Legends finals, right? How they brought him on and they had like a, like a fun event. Where he duo or it was him versus a bunch of like streamers. Well, not just him, like him and other like him and Freak were in the bot lane. He had he has he has had quite the redemption arc when it comes to League of Legends. <laughs> that is true, yeah. From you know, pro we, we need all your we, we need your redemption arc now. <laughs> redemption arc. <laughs> we need our YouTube redemption arc. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> But that was a good transition for League of Legends because Riot find a whole bunch of 
a few players and a coach, three players and a coach got fined, and 12 people got warnings. Um, I saw this. So, yeah, apparently the well, the coach for a South Korean team, well, which one team was it? Royal Never? Royal, yeah, Royal yeah. Never give up. Um, so, Uzi, of course, he's been through. It's not like the first time he's gone through controversy at all. Right. So he got fined 2,000 players for potentially feeding on an account that did not belong to him, which is also against the rules. So, right. Um, then he got Gambit Esports. Oh, 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 I jumped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gambit Esports, Jungler, Diamond Prox, and then Invictus, Top Laner, The Shy. Actually, a lot of Europeans got warned. Just throwing that yeah, out there. Just throwing that out there. And, of course, uh, South Koreans, too. They're all kind of crazy. Because, yeah, a freak of freaks. The coach uh, was fined $1,500. Reported in more than 70% of his solo queue game for negative behavior. Seven, where is this <laughs> double a... standard coming from? We're giving them small fines. I want a fine. Boot it out of the league, okay? You guys have to uphold standards. 70% as a coach. <laughs> you guys suck. This is why you'll never make it. <laughs> like, what does he do to his players anytime they lose? I know. If they mess up, he probably slaps them or something. <laughs> you best start playing well, I swear to God. <laughs> like, man, this is every game. What's this? Like, jeez, dude, calm down. <laughs> Don't take it. You're a coach. What are you doing? Don't take it so seriously. All right, like, you just don't. You don't even need to play technically. <laughs> so yeah, and then twelve warnings. I would like to point out the one from NA League Cloud Nine was Sven Skirin, European. <laughs> <laughs> Europeans are just they got that trash talk ready, primed and ready. If you mess up, yeah, like G two esports perks um, and. Some of these teams, it was like their entire team, like uh, Vital- Team Vitality had like three players. <laughs> ha, G2, yeah, like uh, G2 Esports, two players. Gambit Esports had like, th- yeah, he just had one player. Invictus Gaming, a couple players. Edwards Gaming had like a couple players. It's like, come on, guys. It was all Europeans and South Korea. It's probably at that point that they're that. I mean, obviously they want to win because they're competitors. But I feel like, I mean, you're in professional. Like, yeah, like solo queue you, really doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, why are they intentionally feeding a solo queue and being like a lot of them was? It's just they intentionally feed or cause their game like teams to lose and stuff. It's like, why? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, why are you guys taking are the solo queue so serious? Like, or I don't know. Who knows? Like ego complex, I guess. Maybe it's ego. Like, it's like, you know these guys aren't going to be as good as you. They're not right. Pro. I wonder if some have come across like being intentionally trolled, though. So they're just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> not that that is like, I guess, reason, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. But Oh, well, don't play League, I guess. That is. If I was a professional, I feel like I wouldn't care about solo queue. I'd be like, I'm already a professional. Like, I'll that's all a, I need I'm making money. <laughs> right. Like, I'm making money. Show me all you money. want. I'm still making money on whether I win or lose this solo queue game. All the games that matter are the professional games. Um, I had a topic for the games, and I may have forgot what that topic <laughs> was. It was a good topic, too. Uh, so, uh, you know cool. what? No topic week. <laughs> no topic. The lost topic. Maybe you'll come back next week. I t- totally forgot what it was going to be. It was a good one, too. <clears throat> Whatever. It'll, it'll still work next week, I'm sure. So let's go on into TV and movies. Uh, the Witcher found its cast for Yennefer and Siri, which... Actually, it's going to be interesting because this is going to be the big breakout lead, I think, for both these actresses. So, Freya Allen will be playing the role of Ciri. Uh, she's been in one episode of Into the Badlands. Very good show, by the way. Uh, really love Into the Badlands. There's only like two seasons right now. Who knows when the third season's coming out. And then a show called Bluebird where she was in it for like three or four episodes. 
That's all she's done. She's literally done like six things. Nice. So At she's a Siri, so that's big. Um, and then Anya Chalatra <laughs> will be Yennefer, who's been in ABC The Murders and a show called Wonderless. Also, has only acted in like four, five episodes. So it's pretty. These two actors, nobody really knows too much about them. Like they must have killed it in auditions. True. Uh, so Freya and Allen, she kind of looks. She kind of got a Siri look to her, and she's the same age of seventeen. So perfect, perfect. And yeah, the girl playing Jennifer kind of looks like Jennifer a little bit too. So I think they cast a whole bunch of other people too, but it's a whole bunch of you know not as important as Siri and Jennifer who are obviously the good <laughs> ones. I don't think they've cast Triss yet. Um, I don't know if Triss is going to be in the show, but she better be. She, she's searching like is she in the show please be in the show she better be in the damn show <laughs> pretty much exactly that and then we got our first glimpse at the aladdin live action Why movie that? no it's it's here so the teaser trailer kind of dark tone to it very dark actually um not too much going on we didn't we got one glimpse. Is that, what, is that like the, you know, the thing? They just, you know, adultify, I guess, Disney movies as live actions? Uh, I would say that is a thing, yes, because <laughs> I would say so. Um, we didn't get a look at the genie, which, of course, the genie is being played by Will Smith. Um, hey! I'm guessing he's going to be a CGI effect, and it's just going to be him voicing I would assume or so. Or we're just going to have a black man coming out of a lamp. Just a <laughs> what if it's just him in, like, you know, jeans and a t-shirt? Hey, I'm the genie. <laughs> I'm the Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> what? I can give you three wishes down playing some people. <laughs> Jesus. It's like, what's going on here? <clears throat> so, yeah, got the first trailer for that. Uh, comes out sometime in 2019. I still don't care. Yeah, same. I'm just like, eh, I've seen. Eh, don't care. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> don't care. I've seen enough of Aladdin, I guess. <laughs> Apparently, we played the games as well, so. <laughs> right. Apparently, there's a shit ton of games we can go play. <laughs> um, let's move on to Marvel stuff. Hey! Iron Fist got canceled. Uh, so we will not be getting a third season of Iron Fist. <laughs> Yikes. Which is kind of unfortunate because I enjoyed the second season. It was much better than the first season, but I don't think enough people... I think too many were turned off from the first season that they didn't give the second season a try. And they did say it is possible that there still be cameos in the other Marvel shows that are still going, like Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. But it will be interesting because... The spoilers, Iron Fist is not Iron Fist anymore. He gave up, Danny Rand gave up his powers to Colleen Wing. Um, so, and she has the Iron Fist right now. So, if there is a cameo in the other ones, I would imagine it's going to be her because she has the power. So, it was like a huge freaking bombshell at the end of the second season. Like, oh, hey, she has the power now and she's going right. to use it differently. Because Danny Rand was kind of like, oh, it's kind of consuming me and make me not the person I kind of want to be. Uh, but Colleen can kind of like control it a lot better. So it's just going to be open. It's just going to be left with her having it. Danny Rand's going to just go off, do something. He's rich as hell, so he can do whatever he wants. Because, <laughs> you know, most, most, a lot of superheroes are rich. Yeah. Actually, no, not a lot. I, just the cool ones, maybe. I guess. Maybe. Uh, Who knows? They could be rich if they wanted. You figure, you know, people would just pay them. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Rest in peace, Iron Fist. That kind of sucks for me. Uh, would have been interesting to see where they took the story. Okay. Black Panther 2 has secured its writer. And they're going to start writing the script out for the next year. 
uh, not unexpected that this was coming. Black Panther was massive. I would say it was very successful. 1.3 billion. I haven't even seen it yet, though, to be honest. (laughs) It's pretty good. Uh, I would say, you know, the villain's overrated. But that's pretty good. (laughs) So, yeah, it's being written by the same guy who did the first one, Kugler. Um, What's his last name? Why is it not shown his first name in this? Ryan Kugler. He's also been developing a drama i guess too he's also the executive producing producer of the space jam sequel with lebron james Ooh, those are two totally different types of movies but nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe that means lebron's gonna show up in wakanda yeah that's <laughs> it that that's what no he's gonna be in the space jam space jam looney tunes right and instead of you know the the token white guy that helped out michael jordan in the, it's gonna be little black panther coming in we'll come to forever and dunk oh, yeah. on the, just dunk on the lawn stars or something perfect you better send that in you better copyright that before they steal it so yeah uh let's see yeah the write the script next year with an eye to start production either late 2019 or early 2020 so it's a quick turnaround from a script writing the other last piece of marvel news is scarlett johansson lands 15 million dollar payday for black widow movie hey which is the salary that chris evans and chris hemsworth had for Captain America and Thor and Infinity War, which makes sense that you know she's gonna get a I mean equivalent paycheck as them, now. and it's her individual movie, and she is the biggest actress in Hollywood by far. Uh, she was yeah she I mean she was almost up there as like I think as the top acting uh, like grossing actor yeah in general not just you know women because uh, you know. Scarlett Johansson, really big. She's really good at everything she does. Not all her movies are good. But you can be a good actor and do bad movies. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> yes, it does happen quite a bit, unfortunately, for some yeah, of them. That it ruins their careers. On some of them. I, that feels so weird to be like, damn, I killed that role, and then the movie's just trash. Like, all right, I hate it. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I mean, it was only a matter of time until we finally got a Black Widow movie. I'm yeah for it. I like Black Widow. Uh, I'll probably look check it out. She is like one of the people on the team with the least background, like that we know really not too much about, roughly, but like not. Yeah, definitely. Like obvious, her. Her obviously, obviously, like Hawkeye. Yeah, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is kind of mysterious too. I guess he has a family though. <laughs> but those are the two that give us, you know. They're they're there for us, us people without powers, right? Like because right. they don't have mean. powers, and it's like <laughs> you gave us help. We don't have to be a super powered person to join Captain America. We can be right. I don't think Hawkeye has powers. He's just really good with a bow, but I don't know how he makes his arrows twist himself it's, without I powers. Guess it's kind of a power never missing with your arrow. <laughs> He's like, oh, what move? That one where he's like, he makes it twist around the building or something. Like, dude, I don't care how good you are with the bow. You ain't doing that without a power. Don't lie to me. Don't you lie to me. At least not hey, quit. She's just good with martial arts, okay? Lots of practice. All right. All right, Logan, how much practice do you think it'll take you to bend an arrow in mid flight? Probably like 100 years. <laughs> oh, when we have the technology to do so. Maybe that's right. it. Maybe his bow's got super tech, and I missed that. Right. Part. Maybe the arrow has something. You know, maybe the arrow he shoots in, and like a little wing pops out, and it turns it. I needed to pop out at this precise time. <laughs> put a little timer on it. A little timer on it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's mostly in movies and stuff too. Uh, did you see? Sorry, did you see the whole Suicide Squad two thing? Yes, being a, that's it. That was you're right. I should have brought that up. I forgot to. Of course, I see down. that you have written it down right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Suicide Squad too. I forgot because Suicide Squad, you know, was just <laughs> atrocious and should never have <laughs> been a movie. Or you tried to suppress that, and you're like, 
Oh god, he brought it up. Oh wow, a second one. That one's being uh James Gunn, right? Yes, that's the interesting part. They're like, oh, Marvel does well. Well, take him, take him. He right. does good movies. Maybe we can get a good Suicide Squad. Right. So Just I give mean... me a whole new cast. Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't need a new cast. Obviously, James Gunn did Guardians of the Galaxy. Both of them. Yes. <laughs> and the whole fiasco happened. Uh, I think this is a smart move by DC. Oh yeah. Maybe... I wouldn't put his name on Suicide Squad too, but whatever. Yeah, I feel like you should have took something and made him do a character that hasn't got a movie in the DC world yet. Right. And gave it to him, like an unknown DC, or like a smaller name DC character or a fan loved one that hasn't gotten a solo movie, and give it to them. But, right. Uh, instead, of, they just really want. I guess Suicide Squad did enough <laughs> in like money wise that they're like, you know, what, we're gonna pump out another one, even though. Nobody right, likes that movie. It's going to come out in like 2019. So that's what's listed on IMDb or I, IMDb. That'd be. I think that'd be like too quick of a. I don't know. Actually, maybe. I. I, I don't, don't think know. I'm going to watch it, but I. I I'm not going to watch it. You watched this. I've right. watched most of it, and then I was just like, "All right, I'm going to watch something else." <laughs> <It was laughs> that's so pretty much bad. what happened. No, I didn't even know. None of it made logical sense in that movie either. Right, it was like it was right. just so bad. Uh, but I mean, they had Maybe a couple of good actors and actresses, but DC's you know light years behind Marvel. Maybe he can just make one good movie <laughs> for them. I should not have given him Suicide Squad too. I feel like giving him Suicide Squad too is just saying it's him like, come oh, dude, come direct this and stuff. And it's like, oh god, this script is awful. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> start it at the top, right? <laughs> oh man, well, good luck, I guess. But. Uh, yeah, oh man, he got poor James Gunn. He's like, all right, I got a job. Oh god damn, I got suckered into Suicide Squad <laughs> too. Couldn't give me something cool. <laughs> Could you imagine if they didn't even tell him? Like he's like, yeah, we want you to, you know, direct one of our movies. He's like, all right, cool. And then we they're like, yeah, it's Suicide Squad too. <laughs> gotcha. <No! laughs> can't, can't, can't pass on it now. You already saw it. Must commit. Sudoku. <laughs> all right. That, that that's everything though unless you have another story i, I missed out of nowhere i only i only get one one per episode i bring one up <laughs> uh, you, you had three this week oh yeah true damn that's way over my quota <laughs> that's I was, it's not like that. <laughs> thanks man uh but let's just go ahead and jump into this outro Everyone, well, yeah. Again, thanks for joining us for another We Be Talking episode 11. Not uh, once again for episode 11, but once again for We Be Talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as always, you can uh, reach out to us anywhere with suggestions, comments, feedback, anything like that, corrections. Head us up on our individual Twitters, which are in the description below. Uh, at Lord Zildtoid is me, at LSButler32 is Logan. You know, you can hit us up. We have a community Discord, which is in the description below as well. You can hit that link to join. You can talk over there with us. Uh, email us at couchtalkyt at gmail.com. Anything like that. Uh, and, you know, be sure to like, subscribe, share. All that helps. And until next week, peace out. See ya.